Hi. So I'm going to talk about GraphQL, and uh, I know it's late. Um, I have a lot, I have a lot to talk about, um, but I know it's late, so I'm going to promise you that yes, I will run over time. Um, so before I start, um, these slides are accessible. If you accessible to screen readers, if you point your screen readers to the screen, if you are not able to see the screen, um, you can scan, and they will show on your device. Um, and screen readers should be able to to read that. Um, so um, this is me, or like a four-year-old beardless version of me. Um, you can find me on all sorts of, uh, of social networks. Um, I work for Cloud Health Technologies, which is a cloud service management company. We, were, we are completely revamping our platform, so we are hiring a lot of seniors engineers. Um, and also, I have stickers if you're into that sort of things. Um, a bit of a disclaimer, I'm, uh, I'm actually very new to Scala, so don't be offended. Uh, I'm also quite new um, about GraphQL, and um, well, I'm new to giving talks, so I really don't know why you voted for me, but <laughs> now you have to deal with it. I didn't vote for myself, so. Um, so to talk about GraphQL, the, I figured the best way was to find an example, and I'm going to talk about something I really like, and I don't know about you, but I really like beer. Um, and I was, I, when I came here, I was in need of an application to help me locate the breweries around me uh, to know that I was in good hands. Um, so I came up with Ubeer, which is a geolocation-based app. Um, it's very simple. Um, vanilla JavaScript client application that talks to uh, an HTTP web server that, that uh, exposes a GraphQL endpoint through Sangria, the Scala implementation of uh, GraphQL. And that's, that's all there is about. Um, the model is also very simple. Uh, beers, breweries, styles and categories, all of that loaded from JSON files. So very simple. Um, so it's demo time. Hopefully it's going to be better than that. Um, so that's how it looks. I, I want to know the breweries in Brooklyn, and there are two of them, so it's perfect for tonight, one for breakfast tomorrow. Um, and I can access details about each beer, um, ABV, name, description, that kind of thing. Uh, so, so that's it. If I, if I was writing that, if I was using REST API for this, I would probably um, use a slash breweries endpoint that would return me a JSON response. Uh, but what if I want to add things to that? So if I want to add a phone number or if I want to actually add the list of beers that we saw. Um, I could decide to just add these things to slash breweries, but then my existing apps and applications will overfetch and not use that extra information. I could say, you know what, everything that I add is actually a new version, but that becomes a pain to maintain. Um, um, a good practice of sometimes it's also to that slash breweries would return a list of beers and then each beer would be accessed individually, but that leads to a lot of round trips, so we have to come up with batching and, and all other um, mechanisms. So in the end, we often go for like a custom DSL style, and um, that's not really my business. I'm in the beer drinking business, I'm not in the query string business, um, so I don't want to write uh, a DSL by myself. There is probably a, li a library for that, and yes, that's GraphQL. Um, so, so let's look at it differently. That's the response I expect from um, for my client application. That's that's what I expect, and um, and when I look at that, what I expect is also what I what I want to ask. I want to ask this to the server. I want to ask the properties of that JSON, and that's exactly what a GraphQL query is. It's really the, the key properties of the keys of the JSON response that I want. Um, and if I want to not ask for beers, um, I don't have to change my, my server endpoint. I can just stop asking for it. 
Um, so that's GraphQL. GraphQL is made by Facebook. They started in 2012 internally and they open sourced the, their specification in 2015. Um, and there are implementations in pretty much all popular languages. The reference implementation is in JavaScript, but the Scala one is, I've, my understanding is that it's much more powerful than even the reference implementation. Um, so at a very high level, it's a, GraphQL is a query language and a type system for, a, for your APIs. So you describe your schema using GraphQL and then your queries access, uh, your, your clients make queries through that um, schema. Um, it's backend agnostic, uh, transport agnostic, format agnostic. Most people today use it with HTTP and JSON, but you can pass it any format you want and use any, uh, any transport you want. Um, and because of its design, it encourages not versioning your APIs, and that's, that's a killer feature for me. Um, so let's, uh, let's hack a, a couple queries quickly. So I'm gonna start with, can you see? Yep. So I'm gonna start with this. When I run this, I get the exact thing that I expect, but I can also, as opposed to REST, I can also give um, parameter arguments to, to fields within the, re the query. So I want 50 ca characters maximum, and I'm running this, that's the limit. Um, and also a feature that, that it enables is I can ask for disjoint things. For example, I can ask for a different, completely different thing, like um, this guy, so brewery, and I want all the beers for that brewery, um, all the names, and that's it. I get two different things, and that's very interesting if you have an application with completely disjoint components um, that don't know about each other, you can gather fragments of application like that and run that through a single, um, a single query. Um, uh, I had a lot more examples, but since I'm running over time, uh, I compiled all of them in a GitHub repo that I give it, I, I remind of the URL at the end. Um, so Sangria, Sangria is the Scala implementation. Um, it is made by a guy called Oleg Ilyenko. He is pretty much single-handedly doing that. He's doing a tremendous job and he's also an extremely friendly open source maintainer. Um, very nice. Um, I shared my, my project with him and he opened like a 200 PRs without asking anything. So, so <laughs> it was very nice. Um, um, so it has a lot of features way beyond why the, why the, the, the specification uh, specifies. Uh, but at the very minimum, it offers, it lets you define your schema through the, the types and then you can pass and execute queries on that schema. So for example, you would have a ACK HTTP that gets the query from uh, an HTTP endpoint and then send that to your backend after passing it and executing it. Um, and something that's, it's, it's almost a given, but it's, it's very nice, is that GraphQL comes with built-in types and Sangria converts that to Scala native types um, so for example, you can have, um, so in this query, we have ID as an argument, which is a required int, but you can have new label types, and new label types are converted to options, so this one would be an option of a beer, um, which, is, which is pretty nice. So that's a query type. Query type is a root type, it's what you, you, you start by asking, and that's the, the, the entry point of your of your uh, query, and then you can ask, for this beer I want the brewery, and for this brewery I want all the other beers, and so on. So that's one of the, the, the query, the root query types uh, of this small demo project. Um, and the way you use it is by making this sort of queries, and a thing to notice here is that the, um, there are two things. The left-hand side, which is really the query type, and the right-hand side, which is the output type. So if we focus on the query type, this is how you implement it with, uh, with Sangria. You first define an argument type, 
Um, and then you, you define an object type for that query which takes, so I call here a repository which in Sangria it's called, a, it's a context and the role of a context, the, the usual role of a context would be to access your database. So here my database is just JSON files. Um, and then I define my build, my beer field. Um, and the in interesting piece of this is the resolve function. So the resolve function is just calling uh, the method beer on context, which is just a finder on a list. Um, so it's not rocket science, but I'm not a Scala developer, so it took me three weeks to do that. Um, um, another thing that, and that's my last point actually. Another, um, another thing that Sangria provides is type, type derivation. So, so if you think about it, you want to expose, so in this case you want to expose a tile, a style to your clients. You also probably have a, a case class that maps to your JSON files. Um, I don't want to define my case class and then define the same object type with the same fields all over again. So I only have three here, but I could have way more. So you can, you have a set of macros called the derived macros that take your case class as, a, as an argument and, and map this to, to come up with a style type, uh, to a, a derived object type. And then you can pass some modifiers to that type. Um, so in this case, I add a description, I add a field for beers, which is not part of the case class, it's part of my repository. And I also replace the category ID with a, with a custom category method because I don't want the users to have access to the category ID. I want to provide a way to, to dive into the category so they could do, uh, I want a beer and for this beer I want this style and for this style I want this category. And like, they can go through, um, go through this. Um, so that's all actually, um, didn't take that long. Um, so thank you very much and if you have any question, I, I will leave the resources in the back end. So the question was, is there any kind of pro protection against abuse of the type? So one example would be, I want a beer, and then I want the style of this beer, and then I want all the beers of this style, and, and, and I can do that forever. So I haven't used it, but Sangria has um, a concept of query analysis, which lets you dive into your query before running it, so you can do some, some checks uh, on what you are going to execute. So you can add a uh, complexity maximum, for example. Um, so there is that. And um, there is another concept of prepared queries. So the same way of what you're describing, but you can have, you can store some very complex queries on the, on the back end. Um, I think it's gonna be part of the specification actually, but you can store very complex um, queries on the back end and your front end just have a, has a, an access to an, a, to an index and it's not able to run these complex queries that go beyond the complexity. The, the way that you go through each type and no it's part of the of the of the spec but the the query type that we saw here it's just a regular object type it's a convention that it's it's a query type um, but but it's it's just it's just the same thing than any other type 
Um, yep, that's it. So I got. Awesome. Okay. <laughs>